Hello, I'm Rob Wagoner, and today I want to spend just a couple minutes and talk about creating virtual machines through the traditional Azure Management Console. In the lower left hand corner of your console, you have the New button. We'll go New Compute Virtual Machine. We have two different ways to create virtual machines in Azure through Quick Create or through the Gallery. I'm going to show you both. While Quick Create is handy, my concern with Quick Create is it doesn't let you configure enough options. But we can quickly say quick demo for a DNS name for my server, put in my username, and then I can pick my region or affinity group. So if I've set up affinity groups already, like I've set one up here, I could put it in the affinity group. Otherwise, I put it in a region. And we give you a list of the available regions to put your virtual machines in. I then say create the virtual machine and it'll take a few minutes to create this virtual machine. While it's doing this, I'm going to show you the other way to create a virtual machine through the gallery. When I choose from gallery, I'm given a lot more options. I'm given all of my virtual machines listed. I could have gotten those through Quick Create, but it would have been harder to read. I can filter these down to just say Windows servers or my Linux based servers. I'm going to choose a Windows server Server 2012 R2 Data Center. What I want to point out here is all of these are based on Data Center Edition SKUs. There isn't a Windows Server standard SKU sitting in the Azure Gallery. And my heads up to you on that is, is if you build a workload in Azure that you think you may want to bring back on premises, remember when you bring it on premises, you're going to have to give it a license. If you build a data center image, out of Azure, you're going to have to put a data center edition license on it, right? My suggestion to you is if you may bring it back on premises, if you're not going to have a whole lot of machines, you're not licensing data center as a standard practice in SMB, typically we don't. My suggestion would be to build an on premises virtual machine out of standard edition, then upload that, and then you can use that through my images here to deploy your custom image. We'll talk about that in a later session. But here I want to bring up data center. I can pick the different release version dates. So this has to do around patches and updates. So I'm going to pick the most currently updated machine. I can give it a name and I can pick my basic or standard tier. When I choose basic tier, I have limited options around the size of this VM. Only the A series VMs are offered in basic. When I move back to standard, I can see my A series VMs, more options. I can also see D series and then the newest G series VMs available. So I can build this about any size I want. Again, I enter my username and password. Now in the gallery creation, going through the whole gallery, I have more options. So I can create a new cloud service. I can choose my affinity groups, my regions, or virtual networks. When we talk about virtual networking, I'm going to go through and show you again how to create a virtual machine to make sure it shows up in your virtual network. But for now, we're just going to put it in a region. For a storage account, we can automatically generate storage accounts or if you've already pre-created a storage account, you can store your data there. To me, I try really hard to pre-create my storage account so that it's a self-documenting process. I can name the storage account and I know what's in it so I don't have to go look for it. The other thing I want to point out here, we have two endpoints by default opened for a Windows Server VM. By default, all VMs in Azure are sitting behind this additional firewall that you don't control. The only control you have over the firewall is what endpoints get opened. And as you see, we open PowerShell. For the remote desktop port, our public port is auto. We'll actually auto pick a port and then remap that to the private port of 3389. Hitting next, install the virtual machine agent. This is like your Hyper-V manager management agent so that Azure can actually do an orderly shutdown of your VM, see how your VM is running. We also have configuration extensions like Puppet Enterprise, Chef, or even custom scripts and security extensions. So we have three different anti-malware engines that you can inject into your image at creation time. None of these are options when you go through Quick Create either. Now I can click OK and it'll start the provisioning of these virtual machines. I'm going to come back to you after they're done. OK, so now we're back. And as you can see, both virtual machines have been created and they both show a status of running. That typically takes 10 minutes or so to set this up, but that's how we set up these VMs. And as you can see, we can click on the bottom here and 
and get full details on how one of these was created. The next thing you want to do is be able to connect to them. So the interesting thing about the quick demo where we did the quick VM creation, it makes a lot of assumptions for you and the only thing you have is this cloud service that it's put in. When I work through the gallery demo I can do a lot more with it. But now that I have this selected I can choose connect and this will instantiate an RDF session with the virtual machine we just created. And it'll say unknown publisher, it'll ask you for credentials, then it'll take a moment to connect and while that's connecting I've gone ahead and connected to the other virtual machine and as you see this is just a Windows Server 2012 virtual machine. I'll minimize this Windows Server 2012. So that's how to quickly create a virtual machine in Azure, either through the gallery or through Quick Create. As we move through this series, I'll talk about virtual networking and then I'll show you how to create a virtual machine within a virtual network as well. But for now, thank you and I wish you well.